All right, let's move on to number 13. All right, I'm gonna have someone read this part out loud for me. This part, how about alone? Can you read this part out loud for me? In giving final grades, the students mean and standard deviation in the class are 70 and 10, respectively, and the scores are normally distributed. All right, and then read part A also. If the teacher wanted to lower the curve and give anyone above 80 an A, what percent of students would get an A in the class? All right, yeah, so um, I'm gonna give you guys a minute to think about it. Like how are you gonna, how are you gonna do part A? Okay. So before you guys start a problem like this, make sure that you write down the notation so that later you can, uh, uh, 70 is the mean, right? And then 10 is the what? 10 is what? Is a standard deviation, right? Is the standard deviation. You can write the S, okay? Yeah, S stands for standard deviation. All right. Now you guys can um, think about part A, how you guys gonna do it. One minute. And uh, on the exam, they may ask. When you guys are given a normal distribution, that means that you guys are going to use the empirical rule, okay? Empirical rule. It means that, what is that, 68%, 95%, 99.7%, okay. And the last case is 99.9%. I forgot the last case, yeah, right. The first case is 68%. The last case, um, we rarely use it. All right, so go ahead and use the, the empirical rule to uh, do part A for me. All right, so let's draw the diagram. You draw the diagram like this, okay? And the mean is 70, the mean is 70, okay? And the standard deviation is 10. And part A, if the teacher wanted to lower the curve and give anyone above 80 an A. So in this case, we have we, we are given only the, the mean 7D and the standard deviation, right? So we don't know exactly where the, the score 80 will be. So you have to use the empirical rule to um, find the 80 first, okay? So you can try to go to the left one standard deviation and go to the right one standard deviation of the mean. So if you go to the left, one standard deviation of the mean, then what is the value right here, everyone? What is the value right here? Can you guys type in the chat for me? If you go to the left, one standard deviation, then this is the 68%, the right? The 68% rule. So what is the number on the left, everyone? That's the number on the left, because you go to the left, just one standard deviation of the mean, so you just subtract 10 from 70, right? So this will be 60. And the number on the right will be what, everyone? Will be 80, is that right? To the right, that means that you add, you add the standard deviation 10 to the 70 to get the 80. So here is the 80. Um, so here is the 80 that they are talking about, okay? Here is the 80, so that score. And so if the teacher wanted to lower the curve, and give anyone above 80, uh, the score 80, an A, what percent of students would get an A in the class? So that means that they're asking you to find the area, the area of this region here, above, right? Above 80. So that means that they're asking for the, the area or the percent that is above 80, okay? that is above 80. All right, so I'm gonna give you a minute to um, try it first. I got Uriel already, Merlos already. What is the area that is above 80?
remember they are asking for the percent of the area, not the numbers. Okay, and think about it. The total area of the distribution is 100%. 100% is the total already. I got a loan so-so. Uh, but then the middle one is 68% already. So you have to take the 100% minus the 68% and minus the area of the, the left tail to get the area on the right. So think about it. We got Uriel also. We will find out, I have different answers from you guys. All right, good try everyone. So remember that uh, first, the area of the middle section is 68%, right? So to get the area, area of two tails, okay? Of two tails, you, um, I got alone two. We'll find out if that is the answer, okay? So we get the area of two tails, the one on the left and the one on the right. Um, we take 100%, right? Minus the one in the middle, 68, 68%, which is 30, 32%, right? 32% is the area of the left tail and the right tail. But then you want the area of the right tail. That means that, so you want, I'm gonna just name this one is um, A2, okay? And this one is A1. The area of the left tail is A1 and the area of the right tail is A2. So to get um, A2, you just take 32% divided by two, is that right? Because the left tail is the same as the right tail, the area. So that means that it's 16%, everyone. Yeah, good job, everyone. Good try, even if you don't get exactly the same answer, but it's good that you think, you thought about it, right? Good, yeah, so that's the answer, okay. So 16% of students of, um, let me see, of students would get an A, okay? Would get an A and it's good that you guys know how to do this because later when you move on to the next chapter, you will use this a lot. So make sure that you know how to do it. All right, any questions about this part? All right, if not, then we are gonna move on to part B. All right, I'm gonna call up. Can someone to read it out loud for me? How about Brittany? Can you read part B for me? Yes. Deciding not to fail anyone in the class, he decided to give a grade C for anyone scoring lower than two standard deviations below the mean. What percent of students would get a C in the class? All right, thank you. All right, I'm gonna give you guys two minutes to think about it and draw the distribution and then label all the numbers and label exactly where it would be at uh, two standard deviations below the mean and then uh, shade the area of the part that you need to find. The area or the percent of the students would get a C. Two minutes. Draw the distribution with you guys and see what you guys got so far. So since it's a normal distribution, one more time, everyone, um, the only time that you can use the empirical rule is when it is the normal distribution. And if it's not normal, you guys cannot use the empirical rule, okay? But since it says in this problem is that it's the normal distribution, so you can use the empirical rule. All right, so here is the distribution and the mean is still 70, right? The mean, is still 70 and the standard deviation is still 10. Okay? You still use the same standard deviation. And uh, in part B, um, they are asking you, okay, deciding not to fail anyone in the class. The teacher decided to give a grade C for anyone scoring lower than two standard deviation below the mean. So that means that from the mean, you have to go to the left two standard deviations, everyone. You have to go to one, two standard deviations, okay? So one standard deviation, two standard deviations. 
All right. But then, and then um, the percent of the people um, that uh, will get a C will be this area right here. So you have to find the area. So all the people with a score that is lower than two standard deviations will be, uh, will get a C, get, but what is the percent of this area? Or what is the area of this shaded region? Or what is the percent of that uh, region? That's what you guys are trying to find. And if you, if you look for the, and remember that they are asking you for the percent but the percent of the people. So if you go to the left, two standard deviations of the mean, then this one will be 50, right? The, the, the cutoff value for a C will be 50, okay? But then you cannot do anything with just the number on the left, right? So in order for you to use an empirical rule, you have to go to the right, two standard deviations as well, okay? You have to go to the right two standard deviations as well so that you can use the empirical rule. So in this case, what is the area of the middle section, everyone? Back for me. What is the area of the, the middle section here? If you go to the left two standard deviations and you go to the right two standard deviations. I got you, how about other people? You go to the left two standard deviations and you go to the right two standard deviations. What is the area in the middle section? What case is that? I got Jennifer, good. You really got, uh, got it too. Brianna, um, if you look at this one, everyone, look at what we just did over here. What case do we have here? if we go to the left two and go to the right two standard deviations. Yeah, you guys need to remember that. How about other people? It's uh, the second case, everyone. It's a uh, 95%, right? The 68% means you go to the left one, go to the right one, okay? But if you go to the left two, go to the right two, then it's a, uh, then it's the 95%, okay? All right, so now you already have everything. How are you gonna find the area of the shaded region? Go ahead and try it first for me. How are you gonna find the area of the shaded region? All right, I got you real as well. Looks good. It's similar to part A that we just did. Pre are now good but that's the area of, of two tails. So if you find half of it, then it's gonna be what, Brianna? Remember that the area of the whole thing is 100%. Okay? To get the area, to get the area of the left and right tails, you take 100% minus the area of the middle section, which is 95%, which is 95%. So you have 5% left. But this is the area of the two tails. So I'm going to just name this one as A1, okay? So what is the area of A1, everyone? Area of A1 is what? I got Uriel already, Brianna already. How about other people? What is the area of the, the shaded region? It's what? Yeah, with 5% divided by two, right? It's half of that. So it's gonna be 2.5%, okay? So that means that, so A1 is the area of the shaded region, okay? So 2.5% of the people would get a C, okay, would get a C, all right, right, half of 5% is 2.5, everyone, all right, any questions? And um, what is the cutoff score for a C, this one right here? 
the cutoff value is the what is the the largest number for a C? Like from that value and lower than that, then the person will get a C. The largest value for a C, and then after that will be the smaller values. Merlot's good try. Here, everyone, the cutoff value is right here. You see, the area of the left tail is the area for the people um, for the people that will get a C, right? Or the percent of the people will get a C. So the cutoff value will be fifty. Okay. Yeah. So it will be fifty. Yeah. So it should be fifty. That would be the cutoff value for a C. Okay. All right. Yeah, I know some of them are new to you guys, so it's good that you guys are um, paying attention and learning about it. Is that right? All right, let's move on to part D. Take a minute and try part D for me. What percent of students would get a B in the class? We know that 16% of the students will get an A, right? And we know that 2.5% of the students will get a C. So uh, so the percent, the percent of students will get, then if you minus the, the percent of the people with an A, which is 16%, and then the percent of the people uh, with a C, which is 2.5%. So now, if you do this math, you will get the percent of the students with an A. So what is the, the answer, everyone? So this is for an A, this is for a C, right? And now you look at my bad, yeah. So is it 81.5? 81.5, right? 81.5, okay? So if you um, add 16 to 2.5, and then if you subtract that sum from 100%, then it's going to be 81.5, okay? And that is part D, right? This is for part D, okay? 